Yeah, it's a long time away from home. It's good to be back on British soil. Yeah, you were saying you, you hadn't you'd slept next to Berkey for like seven weeks solid or something like that. Yeah, you? yeah, that wasn't easy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you loved it though, do you really? Yeah, I do. I got sent to quarantine one <laughs> night with a bit of food poisoning. I was so depressed. Yeah, never missed Berkey so much in my life. Sir Brad had his own room and a little ensuite bathroom. So did Cav. And then me and Berkey were sharing <laughs> the smallest room in the apartment, me and Berkey in it, and we're not the tidiest. And then we're like a, a joint bathroom and then dual on the other side. So um, yeah, the big hitters got the best rooms. But we survived. After you won gold, the women's team squad, they put a little message up saying, this is not your room. What, what happened there? I, well, I don't know about, I've literally got the worst sense of direction in the world. I just got, I always just got the wrong room. So a couple of times I'd walk in, just sit down, put feet up on the sofa, just thinking, this is my apartment. And then like Joe Rouse would walk in, I'm like, Joe, what are you doing in here? And she'd be like, this is my apartment. But ah, oh, oh my bad. So I, th I think they just get a bit sick of that. And that was when we weren't even drunk. Um, so I think they thought there is definitely a chance. And that when I actually took the photo for that, that was actually as I was about to walk into the apartment, I thought someone had written a congratulations sign on our door. I was like, ah, oh, fair play. And then I read it, I was like, ah. Oh. I looked across and Phil Hines was there trying to get into someone else's apartment. I was like, no Phil, no Phil. <laughs> the whole lot of us track riders and BMX were on one floor. It was about five apartments on one floor. And then the floor below, there was a, a staff room and the road squad. And I guess then you were all kind of mixing together and hanging out in each other's room, like yeah, apartments and everything in yeah. between. Kept got to visit the sprinters, but um, don't want to keep disturbing them for too much because we were finished quite early in the programme, really. It was only uh, Hindes that had finished before us. So he pretty much, we adopted him as an endurance rider and he came around with us. But we, we tried to you know, leave the girls to focus and leave the sprinters to focus until they'd finished the hard work. Yeah, that's the other thing. All, like, obviously, although you chat to each other, you, the last thing you want is when you're still competing, there's a load of people going, oh yeah, last night was such a good yeah, night. And you're exactly, like, oh, yeah. I've got three days to go. And, yeah. Yeah, I was going to about to say, it didn't stop Hindes, yeah. <laughs> as soon as he crossed that line, he was in our room with his gold medal, yeah. winging it round his head and yeah. Brad did the best impression of him, won't do another, but yeah, it was good to see. So what was it like, what were the celebrations like? Because you kind of mentioned you were out there for a few days, obviously after, after you won, you stayed out there for a bit. What was, how much kind of partying did you do? As much as we could tolerate, really. It's inevitable, isn't it? We spend so much time living like monks on the months and you know, years, really, you know, in front of that one event. And as soon as you cross the line and everything goes to plan, all you want to do is go out and celebrate with the boys and yeah, inevitably. Leo's not a bad place to do it though, is it? No, it's really fair. good, yeah. Good places. No, really good. GB House is a great place. Free booze. Took a while to get out there, but no, it was great. It's, it's pretty rare that you spend time with the boys in that situation. A lot of the time, you know, we've got our sensible head on training and resting and to be out there with all those bars and free booze on tap, it's, uh, we try to take advantage, yeah. When you're kind of living in that setup, who was the messiest? Who was the... Well, yeah. It's probably your, me, you and Berkey. Yeah. <laughs> Berkey's pretty clean, actually. Berkey was all right, yeah. He's, he's quite anal about all that stuff, He was starting to get frustrated with me when I was using his bed as a bin, wasn't he? Yeah. I think I started off worse than you, but by the end, you, you couldn't walk in his room for like tiptoeing over. He's never had time for anything. Yeah, bottles the of water. Room. Yeah. You're a disgrace. Yeah. <laughs> Is anyone then the complete opposite? Because obviously we've heard like Cav's a bit, some oh, of them are a bit Cav, yeah. Cav, Brad. Polar opposite, yeah. yeah. Brad's pretty clean, but yeah. Cav takes it to another level. He's like so OCD. anal about, yeah. As soon as he got there, the first thing he did is like open up his immaculate suitcase and then I don't think any of us used the wardrobe apart from Cav. He opened it up and hung up all his shirts and folded his socks and his box of shorts. And, Never seen anything like it. So what was the first thing you indulged in once you finished racing? Beer. Yeah. Actually, now Phil Hines did one useful thing when, the whole time he was out there. So we just finished racing and it was a bit of a, obviously we, all, we broke world records, we, all, we were all on control. Um, and it was a bit manic with you know, the press and stuff like that. We got back and he turned up and he must have got 40 Big Macs in for everyone. It was like the one useful thing he did this whole time in Rio. We actually sorted that out. Um, so that was, the, yeah, beer and that, that was the first thing. On day one there was no queue for McDonald's and you could see it out of our balcony and uh, it's day three or four there's a couple of people going there and by the, the start of the second week the queue was an hour long and um, I think I actually ran out of food at queue. one point, yeah, we ran out of food. When everything's free and there's no limit on how much you can take, Yeah, it does get out of hand. What's, what's the best thing about not being in Olympic mode now? Mm. 
It's just nice to have, not have that ruthless focus about everything you do, not just eating and um, drinking anything like that. It's just you really start thinking about every little marginal gain you can get out of yourself. We say so anal about washing our hands. You know, every time we touch the door handle or touch the button and lift, we had the foam spray out of our pockets. And you know, if you get a cough or a cold or anything worse within the last sort of three or four weeks, we wouldn't have won that gold medal, no way. We had to, we had to have four guys with their A game to beat those Australians. It sounds really sad, but one of the first things we did, or I did anyway, after so we got out there and they said, don't drink any of the tap water or any, don't brush your teeth with it, anything like that. So I think at one stage, Berkey, like, just forgot, put some tap water on his toothbrush, just panicked, threw the toothbrush in the bin. <laughs> So it's it little things like that. So you have to wash your teeth with like bottled water and stuff. So it's little stuff like that. So after racing, like you can actually run your toothbrush under a tap and stuff like that. It's the little things. <laughs> do you see the other teams before you race? Were you seeing the Australian squad around the you kind do, of village? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. obviously you're always you're, everyone works in the same time cycle. So you say if you're having your pre-race meal, so if your qualifying's at five to seven, they'll be at seven. So you, you you're always within the same time slots. You bump into the food hall or ride into the food hall at the track and stuff like that. So you see each other quite a lot actually. Yeah. Considering there's ten and a half thousand athletes there, you still somehow bump into the same four guys all the time. Just lastly, now you're kind of going your separate ways. What are you both going to miss most about each other having spent all this time together? I miss all of them. Uh, everyone's uh, played such a crucial role in making this team what it is, and it's you've got to know instinctively everyone inside out you know, in a team pursuit, and you. If one guy's at nine tenths, like I said, we wouldn't have won that. And you've got to be able to read your friends and kind of know when they need to pick up and you know, know when you need a bit of time away from them. And I miss all of them. You know, everyone's got the, the little thing that they bring to the party. You know, Brad's a character, a bit of a joker of the team. Same as Owen, he's just like Geraint Thomas for me. He's almost replaced Geraint. He's like the younger Geraint and very similar in terms of on the bike and off the bike. Berkey, you know, keeps himself to himself. He's pretty quiet, but. I don't know. It feels like my brother, you know, we've been through a lot together. So I'll miss all of them. You're not getting rid of Berkey, though, mate, you're alright. Yeah. <laughs>